Welcome to The Art of Photography. My name is Ted Forbes and today we are going to talk about pinhole cameras. Now last time as you recall we talked about the camera obscura which is the most basic form it's how all cameras work. And basically all we had is we had a dark box that we have open to peer into. But essentially what happens is you need to project light onto the back of this box, uh, whether you have a CCD in a digital camera or whether you're using film in a film camera. And then on the front you either have a lens which uses what's called re refraction to shape the light and focus it onto the back of the box. Or in a pinhole camera's case you're going to use projection uh, by basically reducing the light through a very teeny tiny pinhole to project the light onto the back of the box and put it in focus. Now, the great thing about this is all you need for a pinhole camera is a dark box and a hole. That's it. You can make your own. There are hundreds of options for, for, for putting together pinhole cameras. But today what I want to do is show you some of the pinhole cameras that I've found pretty handy in my use. First camera I want to show you is what is affectionately known as the Pen Holga. Now all this is is a Holga camera that's been modified into being a pinhole camera. If you don't know what a Holga is, it's simply a uh, cheap plastic toy camera that takes 120 medium format film. And what's great about this is it, is it becomes a roll film camera. If you're going to make your own pinhole camera, you're usually kind of finding a way to stick film into the back of it and it's good for one shot until you can get it either into a dark bag or indoors into the dark where you can unload it. But what's great about the Pen Holga is uh, it's simply the lens has been removed and replaced with a pinhole and it is roll film so you can get up to 12 shots while you're out and about shooting which is kind of nice you don't have to reload it. Now this one was done by Randy Smith at Holga Mods and I can't recommend Randy enough. He does great quality work. Um, he does just basic Holga Mods on their basic camera and he also offers this this model as a pinhole. Um, what's great about it is um, pinholes because they're so small and don't let a lot of light in require longer exposures um, and so the way the Holga is designed is just a fixed shutter. You know, you click it and it snaps open and shut really quickly. It's and there's not much you can do. And what Randy has done is he has actually put a jam in here so it holds the shutter open. Now what it is is they've also attached a cable release onto the top so to take the picture to move the shutter all you have to do is simply hold this in. It's got a lock on it if you need to lock it for a really long exposure and when you're done you simply release it and the shutter closes. Uh, the other thing nice about this uh, that he's done for modifications is uh, there's black velcro on it to keep the back from popping off. And also really nice is he's taken a waist level, waist level finder off a box camera and stuck it in here too. So you can actually uh, compose your subject using that. Uh, excellent option, uh, not very expensive. And uh, go check out holgamods.com. Randy does wonderful work. Okay, next up I want to show you uh, this what a company called Santa Barbara makes, which are these wonderful pinhole cameras and they're very basic. Uh, the street price on these is around 50 or 60 bucks depending on which model you get. And the wonderful thing about them, these are large format pinhole cameras. And as you can see, really what you're paying for here is a pinhole in the front and it is a black box. It's got a black matte paint inside to keep it from uh, getting things like light leaks going on, stuff like that. Uh, you use standard 4x5 pin, or excuse me, standard 4x5 film holders with this. Uh, and if you've never used these, they, they hold two sheets of film. And basically what you're going to do is load these in the dark, take a bunch of them with you when you go out, and you simply put that in the back of the camera. It's got these wooden dowels that you move down and position that in place, get it tight so the light's not leaking in. And then when you're ready to take your picture, <clears throat> the front of it just simply has um, this sliding shutter that you move to expose. And then when your exposure's up, then you just simply close it. And the other great thing about these is they do have two tripod sockets on them, on the side and on the bottom. So you can shoot both uh, portrait orientation and landscape orientation. And uh, if you've never used a dark, I mean, excuse me, a film holder before, it has a dark slide. And once the film's been loaded in properly, you simply pull the dark slide up to expose it, make your exposure. Um, in the exposure and put the dark slide down, take it out and flip it around for the second shot. Okay, this camera is another Santa Barbara camera and uh, the only difference between this one and the last one I showed you is this one has a longer focal length as you can see. So rather than being a wide angle, this one's going to act more like a telephoto or a portrait lens, if you will. And uh, what's great about this is I like to do a lot of more macro types of photography and you don't have to be right up onto your subject to do it because of the longer focal length. Um, this one's really great. Uh, it ends up with really nice sharp images. Um, one thing that's really nice about the Santa Barbara uh, company is that they actually you can these cameras come with a chart or you can look on their website uh, and they give you exposure equivalents so when you meter you can actually do the math and figure out what the exposure times needs to be on here. Um, I really like to use this one for kind of like studio imagery and uh, I've done a lot of shots. Um, I've got one of a, a lamp that I did 
Um, I've got some others that are flowers, um, some rose shots. And you gotta bear in mind that with a pinhole indoors, you don't have a lot of light. So if you've never shot pinhole before, if you're shooting outdoors, your exposure is gonna be probably, you wanna aim for something around 20 seconds, depending on how tight your pinhole is. Uh, indoors, this can take up to 45 minutes and sometimes over an hour to shoot. And we'll talk in later episodes about, um, about the, the kinds of failure when using film that you need to make adjustments for on really long exposures like that. But anyway, these are wonderful cameras and uh, I can't recommend them enough. Okay, and last but not least, if you're really interested in shooting pinhole photography, um, there's a wonderful book on the subject by Eric Renner that I can't recommend enough also. It's called Pinhole Photography, Rediscovering a Historic Technique. And Renner takes you all the way through the old ancient camera obscura up to more modern day kind of quirky types of fine art that people are doing with pinholes. And it's really wonderful. There's a lot of alternative things and it's amazing in the history of photography how many different uh, variations there are on basically a dark box with a hole in the front. But anyway, this is wonderful further reading if you're interested and uh, I love pinhole photography I, it's it's uh, it's a very um, a very hands-on way of shooting it's uh, the results you get obviously you're not using a very expensive modern uh, you know mathematically corrected glass lens you're using a pinhole so your images are going to have more of a uh, kind of a crude funky look to them a uh, little out of focus in place all the uh, all the little blemishes that can come up with uncorrected lenses will show up so anyway this is The Art of Photography. We'll see you next time.